didn't know what to do with those. All right, guys, you're back with the Spice Cast. We got Forest Haven. They're done shredding. They're now going to jibber jab <laughs> all across your face space. So enjoy it, uh, guys. Which which forest particularly inspired this band name? <laughs> Is it a different forest for each member? <laughs> all forests. That's a good idea. <laughs> I call Yellowstone. Yeah. <laughs> Is that all forest? I don't know. <laughs> Was that just to put in? Did you just have a randomizer and you got that right. name? <laughs> uh, no, actually, Forest Haven was a uh, mental institution back uh, started okay. in the twenties, and they were helping people with disabilities. And some point during the seventies, the staff that worked there started experimenting on the patients and abusing the patients, and there was deaths and all kinds of horrific torture that went on uh -huh. there and they closed it down i think in the 90s maybe 80s wow or 90s. Had a, they had a long run of uh they, uh, <laughs> they <laughs> buried a, a stack of bodies in a field you know several yeah, hundred yards where, outside where, where about was this in unmarked. the country it was you know, uh, right like, outside of dc uh, okay okay and uh did you did you pl have forest haven songs before you had the title forest haven or did you like have that concept and then go the other way with it yeah, we had some songs written, I think, before. Yeah, we, we got together a, a couple of times before we actually settled on a band name, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think or, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, something like that, yeah. Well, I want to go through and, like, intro you guys, but you play in so many different acts, <laughs> and, or you have projects you've worked on recently, so I'll just go through you uh, one at a time, and I guess you can give me a recent project or something you're working on right now. Uh, but uh, I guess we'll start with with one of the Michael, or Mike, the Michael, the Michael, the, Michael. the bass Michael, Michael. <laughs> bass Michael. Like what? What? Bass. What are you into lately? Other other than Forest Haven? <laughs> well, I'm in Five O'clock Charlie. Uh huh. And we play all over the place, a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. That's Mike Roberts, Chad Reeves, Billy Tyke Miller. Yeah, y'all are busy. I see it all the time. It's it's great. Mm -hmm. um, we're an institution, as somebody says, mental, mental institution. So <laughs> That's a type of institution. Uh, it's and it's way different. And a lot of people think that, hey, uh, you you know, your metal band is your alter ego, and it's really not that way. I'm a metalhead from way back, mm. but probably call Charlie's your alter well, ego. Well, well, yeah, bass, bass players can do that. So to play all the time, which is what I wanted to do. Yeah, I uh, morphed into being able to handle. Five O'Clock Charlie and other mm -hmm, cover bands mm -hmm. kind of like that. But Five O'Clock Charlie does a lot of original stuff, too. So that's, I guess you would call my main gig. Love mm -hmm, those guys like mm -hmm. brothers. Been playing with them. Been playing with Mike since 92 or 3. All but right. Five O'Clock Charlie, I've been with him since 2005. So what's your like favorite jam that Five O'Clock Charlie gets into? Original or not, I guess. Uh, any, Mike any Roberts artists? doesn't get enough credit for being a fabulous songwriter. Mm -hmm. He's written, you know, a thousand songs, and mm -hmm. nine hundred ninety-nine of them are good. <laughs> and um, I never get tired of playing June or Voodoo or uh, all all of Mike's tunes are great. Mm -hmm. So very cool. And, and I love playing originals. And you know, I don't even think I could really do a straight-up cover band mm -hmm. at this point. Right. So five o'clock. Charlie does a little bit of both. And of course, we always love the originals. And this is all original. We're working on one cover, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I'm very, not going to <laughs> I'm in a very fortunate situation right now. I've got two bands going that I love a lot. Heck yeah, heck yeah. And you'll have to give us an acoustic bass no. solo. I did more things earlier to hurt myself. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that's what it's that's what it's good for injuring bass. I don't know. But uh, speaking of mics that write music, we got Mike. <laughs> we got Mike, uh, guitarist extraordinaire of Forest David. What what else have you been into lately? Voodoo is also my favorite uh, Mike Roberts slash Five All right, song. all right. I love that song. This guy's always planted in between our uh, acoustic <laughs> sets. That, <laughs> uh, Trace Locos is kind of the busier band that I've 
been a part of for the last five years um, that, that uh, <laughs> this guy's also in. He's uh, He plays bass in Trace Locos, and we've got a duo called Duos Locos, the two of us acoustically. <laughs> and uh, I play a lot of solo gigs. And, all right, uh, so all right. I'm kind of busy a little bit. <laughs> and Lance, uh, Landover, landowner, Fox Meadows studio owner, practice mm. space uh, <laughs> manager. <laughs> What 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 else have you been getting into? You've done a lot of tracking with uh, some awesome bands late, like recently, or completed some stuff. I think you said within the last couple of years, mm-hmm. yeah, I've done quite a few. The most recent finished one was uh, the Friendly Fingerman, mm-hmm. a little EP for them, which is fantastic. They're all awesome. those guys. So probably my favorite band to play with at the moment. And you're going to be playing March 8th with them and some other great acts, but do you, do you get any say in, like, uh, are you going to make them play a certain song or anything? No, the, <laughs> their entire set, they can squeeze into about 20 minutes. <laughs> what? Yeah, if, you need to have stopping. them in here, man. They're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Sounds like it. They'll, they'll speed right through. And, of course, we have Casey with a K. With a K. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to emphasize that because I'm sure you get it all the time. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to spell it. But uh, so so you're in Duos Locos. Duos Locos? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. And uh, what else do you get into these uh, days? I'm in uh, Duos Locos with Mike. And, mm-hmm. uh, but you're not in Trace Locos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We meant to tell you. <laughs> you, got a, you got a spot over <laughs> Michael just stole your gig, I think. I would love to steal that gig. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I play uh, bass and Trace Locos. Mm-hmm. And uh, once upon a time, I was in a uh, band called So Long Jim and I. Mm-hmm. I used to play around a lot. And uh, really, that's kind of fizzled out for uh, a little while. Uh, but. Pretty much right now, it's just Forest Haven and all of the assorted Locos <laughs> projects. The many Locos. And, uh, <laughs> he also and, works with me every Thursday yeah, night writing uh, songs. Writing some oh, cool. solo stuff. And mm-hmm. me and Lance get together every Thursday and just see what... Mm-hmm. Oh, that's down. awesome. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, cool my, to have a weekly thing. Yeah, my partner in the studio. We originally built the studio for him to write and record his own songs mm-hmm. and then we got addicted to buying gear and it turned into a full <laughs> studio. But, yes. You know, we're finally using it for what mm-hmm. it was built for, mm-hmm. writing songs, and he's had, been a great help on that. So. And y'all have done, like, a lot of heavy music, it sounds like. Is it, has it been exclusively this type of music uh, that, like, no. y'all play, or do you have you run the whole gambit? No. Oh, yeah. I actually <laughs> don't play much heavy stuff anymore. Really? I, yeah, I've got tendonitis in my knees mm-hmm. from playing like that for so many years. Because <laughs> I've played death metal for about 20 years now. And uh, so it's and holding the and holding the drums, yeah, <laughs> that but, doesn't help. Yeah, most of the time when I play now, it's more blues rock oriented. Mm-hmm. And so I get a lot of bands in that that style. Is there anything you haven't like rolled at Fox Meadows that you're uh, like interested in recording? Like any type of music or mm-hmm. any local bands that you've? Uh... Not really, because at my previous studio, I did mostly everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> from. Rap, hip hop. I did rap and hip hop for years. Really, a lot of local artists around here, mm-hmm. and that was my bread and butter for years. Nice. So, uh, but I kind of don't miss doing that. Are there any tricks from like recording uh, lyricists and like hip hop acts that you pull over into like metal groups, or are they pretty different animals like recording wise? Not really. The only thing about doing like hip hop or something mm-hmm. like that, you have to be really fast because if you lose the momentum, then uh, you lose the whole feel, and they get off track, and it just mm-hmm. doesn't sound good. Yeah, I think yeah, I think a lot of that, you know, you've got breath support, and mm-hmm. you could probably get fatigued. I mean, yeah. doing running rap lines for like ages and ages. Yeah, you but just thank, have to be ready to roll at right, any moment. <laughs> definitely. But thank you guys again for coming in. Uh, mm-hmm. Y'all practice in the studio. You said you like record some of your stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any songs that y'all like wrote on the spot and had a recording, and you're like, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten pretty close to that. Most of them mm-hmm. have started uh, out of jams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. What about uh, like Into Obscurity, for example, that we will be playing soon? Mm-hmm. Uh, that one, how it's, how it, old is it? It, it sort of was... builds. Somebody will say, hey, wouldn't it be cool if uh-huh. this happened? Mm-hmm. And then we'll think about it and go home and goof around and come back and say, well, what do you think of this? And either, and that's what's great about the writing situation mm-hmm. is nobody gets butthurt about anything. Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> it's like, Hey, that idea doesn't quite work or, or we'll use it later or that just sucks or that's great. You know, mm-hmm. whatever it is. So into obscurity, 
was uh, you said, hey, we need to do something that's jammy. Mm -hmm. And then I was goofing around at home and had this lick and brought it to the guys. And they're like, well, that's cool. Actually, they didn't say anything. Everybody just kind of started playing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then you came up with the... Yeah, we we had some writing sessions during the week Mm -hmm. where we just all got guitars and Lance had a guitar and had riffs and we all just kind of riffed off each other and just sort of built the song from there it's one of the newest songs that we've got yeah. but uh it it came together pretty yeah. pretty good Mine's pretty kind quick of the linchpin it's like once the music he fills it drive, all out well he drives an idea it somehow it's like you know there's music there's songs without words and we're jamming on it or whatever sometimes two weeks will pass you know like hey i got some lyrics for this what do y'all think and mm-hmm. then, then it really starts to gel because we have an idea of what the concept yeah. is but a lot of it starts with improvisation. Yeah, mm. we yeah. do a lot oh, of yeah. that. We rarely play the song, even the structured songs. We rarely play them the same. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Time. That's cool. Uh, sometimes not on purpose, but <laughs> it always works out. Yeah, we have we have a tendency to write a song and then come back the next practice with tons of new ideas for it. Mm. And we need to change the structure like this, and mm-hmm. then we oh yeah, we got a show next week, so maybe we should. Mm-hmm. Try to remember what Maybe we, we just should played. do this structure <laughs> this week, and then next time, we'll right? Do a different structure. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I kind of liked how y'all y'all started off, and I was almost expecting like the full throttle immediately, mm-hmm. and you kind of had the drum swell mm-hmm. and all and all that stuff, and I was like, yes, this is this is good because <laughs> that dynamic. I think what uh, the like my favorite part about y'all is like you really control the dynamics. I feel mm-hmm. like. Like you're listening to the soft stuff as much as like the hard hard hitting stuff, yeah. and that's that's like huge for me. But uh, for those of you guys on the podcast, check out Into Obscurity. Uh, that was performed right here at Spice Rack Studios. But I wanted to ask you guys: you have any uh, like uh, uh, what is what is it, rituals you do during practice, or something that always happens when you guys uh, practice? Can we talk we... about that? <laughs> <laughs> is it a legal? We can't ritual? talk about that, Casey. <laughs> but, uh, we we talk a lot after practice. Uh, I think yeah, we, we talk we more than we practice. Out yeah. the studio, talking about shows we've seen, talking about stories of previous yeah. bands we're in and shows we've seen, and just you know, mm-hmm. that's fun. Yeah. Were you guys social buddies before you were music buddies, or uh, were they one and the same? A little bit. It's I mean, hard in this town. so yeah. me and Play Casey. Me and Casey have been playing together in all mm-hmm. those projects for a while, and that's pretty much how we got to know each other. I've known Lance from the metal scene when I was in other metal bands from Way nearly back. 20 years ago. Actually, this, this yeah. podcast from and, uh, 2000. And then, of course, I met Michael when we started going to see 5 O'Clock Charlie, and Trace Locos would kind of sit in on a Thursday night and play a song or two and uh, just kind of mm-hmm. built, built the friendships from there. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't meet Casey until Trace Locos mm-hmm. came to the studio yeah. to record. Uh, okay so as for the magic number have do y'all ever pull in a ra- random extra or do you try and do shows with less or Man, we hadn't even considered that I mean, <laughs> if you think about that possibility then you know however many however long this lasts and we could do all kinds of stuff there's a lot of friends <laughs> we have that would be a good fit mm-hmm. for us you know a little phase of what we're doing mm-hmm. Is there ever like any uh, I don't know any instrumentation or parts in particular? You'd be like, oh, we need an extra something. Yeah, most of the time that comes up during the recording. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of multi instrumentalists in the band, mm-hmm. so if something's needed on the recording, then one of us can do it. Uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, and the next one y'all have the point. I wanted to ask about this one. Y'all have a lot of like interwoven guitar stuff. Uh, do y'all have any specialties? Like, is there any, is there like triplets or anything that one of y'all do? Like, <laughs> that is like, oh, it's good. It's time. It's time for Casey or like, <laughs> it's time for Mike. Man. He plays slide really well. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was going to get into that later because that was like some of my favorite. Yeah. That was some of my favorite stuff. It was like really, really tasteful. You don't hear like, enough slide in heavy metal. That's true. That's true. <laughs> He's learning how to sweep pick from Lance. So yeah. yeah well, All right. It's, it's coming along. One, one day. One mm-hmm. day. Yeah. He's by far the best guitarist in the band. Yeah, the, the drummer's the best guitar <laughs> the best player in the band. Too. Well, that's what's weird about this band for me is like, most of the time when a bass player joins the band, the mm-hmm. other guy is long gone. The other yeah. bass player, a mm-hmm. couple of times I've gotten in a band where the bass player converted to guitar. Mm. I'm in a band with two other bass players, <laughs> which is kind of ridiculous. Because I know they're like, I could do that a lot better. Just give me a 
Lance, you have too many skills, but yeah. I can't <laughs> which... sing. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Which one did you start on? Which was like... guitar? Okay, yeah, I started guitar when I was nine. Mm-hmm. And what? Yeah. When did the like the heavy drum stuff start? Uh, well, I switched full time to drums uh, in early two thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've been able to play for years because I always had friends that had drum sets, and I was always on them. Gotcha. Uh, but when I was playing at Spinecast, our drummer decided he was moving to Florida. Mm. So I traded him my whole rig, seven string and everything for his drum set and took over drums in the band mm-hmm. and been full time drummer ever since. Nice. So you two write like on a weekly basis together. Mm-hmm. Did you did you notice anything weird about each other's writing styles or is it pretty similar or yeah, it's I'd say it's pretty similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you all both write on guitar or yeah. do you yeah. just swap mm-hmm. it? Okay. Yeah. Like both guitar and hand at the same time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So on a, did you write any of these in particular, like any of the tracks that we played? Uh, uh, Lance spreading or the wrote, point or into obscurity. Uh, or Lance I wrote, wrote my hands. I wash my hands. Yeah, nice. I did that one. And Force you to play slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see how this works. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, sometimes an, an idea, but we're just vehicles for the ideas, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we all have our own skill set or whatever. Sometimes the idea is so good. It's like okay, this is gonna be something. We got to figure out how it's gonna go into a song. And sometimes an idea will almost be there. It's kind of stewing, and then somebody will punch it through, and all of a sudden that idea becomes the dominant idea, and we work around that. So it's a little <laughs> bit of everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Most of the bands I've been in, I've not really had a hand at all in the songwriting. Really, so this is, mm-hmm. you know, the point was the first song that you know I had. You know, this was the most I'd ever written of a song. Hmm. So it was kind of a kick for me to hear. And I actually had another band called Horker that was trying to work it up, but it just didn't quite work right. And mm-hmm. then showed it to these guys, and it just turned into what it did. Mm-hmm. So nice. it was exciting, yeah. So does, is Mike the lyric guy, or do you all throw into that, too? I leave it up to yeah, him. He's, he's really the lyric. <laughs> so he's far, very, he listens to us talk, though. And the standing outside and talking thing that we do, he, I, he's probably percolating ideas. Because the point is about <laughs> skydiving. Really, I was gonna ask, like, what? Are you... Yeah, it was a weird. I got you know all this bad stuff happened. It was one of those things where I got laid off and all this crazy stuff mm. happened, and I'm like, well, I just go start skydiving, and what the hell do I got to lose? You know, jump out of an airplane. <laughs> no. were, you, were you were you just like set on not doing it before no, that actually, day, and then you're actually, just like, okay, yeah. I feel I feel like it's a day. The parachute was a bummer, but. <laughs> oh. In more ways than one. And I'll tell you, by the way, when the parachute goes off, this strap in between your legs is going to yank your testicles into your throat. That happens. But my kid was uh, doing some kind of research, and we all went to um, the skydiving school, and they were like, hey, you know, skydive? Mm -hmm. And they just kept, you know, everybody nominated me to go. So I said, what the heck? Heck yeah. It was awesome. And you got a song out of it somehow. (laughs) That's very cool. But uh, for you guys listening on the podcast, this will be The Point from Forest Haven. Uh, thank you guys again for talking to us and like driving through the, uh, I don't know what it is, half-flooded, muddy, I don't know what it is. It's always crazy out there. But thanks for coming over. The next one, I Wash My Hands, uh, is it, this is an awesome one. It's got, uh, this is the one with all the stops too, right? Mm-hmm. And the slide, like, I love this. It's got so many textures to it. The stops were the most impressive part to me because, like, y'all really gave each other like time to shine Mm -hmm. drum Mm -hmm. fills and all that stuff uh are all the are those usually always the same or are they always different (laughs) that's the one that changes all the time yeah Yeah. Yeah. Mm. did it change like who's doing what first like do you just look at each other and figure that out or it's sort of got a a structure to it Mm -hmm. but some parts might get way extended or will Mm. shorten them or it just depends on how it feels while you're playing it Gotcha. Do y'all uh, do y'all have any like signals you always use on stage? Like <laughs> just listen. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome yeah. though. Just, just, just pay attention and listen to who's doing what. <laughs> yep. And this is a component of the other bands we're in. I know Trace Locos and Five O'clock Charlie, especially, and I know you too, Lance, with stuff you've done. Mm-hmm. You just kind of go with it, especially right. Five O'clock Charlie. I mean, mm-hmm. you ne- we never have a script. You never know what's going to happen, and you guys are the same way. I don't want to call them jam bands, but they're go with the flow bands mm-hmm. you know so for me this is a different discipline because with five o'clock charlie that is part of what i do so i don't really have to prepare much for a five mm-hmm. o'clock charlie because i won't be you know have my radar on anyway 
for you know we all have our radar on at the gig this we don't play as much mm -hmm. so it's almost like in my head i got to rehearse and practice every time to get ready for any type of show that we do mm -hmm. luckily and i'm old so like that song, I forget what's about to happen, so I just got to watch. <laughs> mm. Luckily, cool things just kind of happen. <laughs> so, That's yeah. impressive in this type of music. It's pretty, like, it seems structured. <laughs> I don't think we Y'all are pulling it either. off really well. Yeah. We didn't quite <laughs> it. the thing about, <laughs> especially modern metal mm -hmm. music, it's way too structured. Yeah. And it, it gets boring. Mm -hmm. you got to have dynamics to a song or the song just sucks. Oh yeah, it, for you've sure. You've got to take the listener somewhere, so that's why we like you know expanding yep. things. Mm -hmm. The guitar solo is jamming. We'll just keep going with the guitar solo. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Did, who's the guy who uh, solos and then like stops looking at everything? <laughs> is there is there one of, is it one of these guys? Uh, like just yeah. get into the zone, or are you guys yeah, always communicate? I, I, I usually have my eyes closed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. rarely you all just open. <laughs> Dude's good, man. Well, yeah, except for him. He has to watch everybody. I gotta watch <laughs> Figure out what song he's playing. <laughs> which one is this? <laughs> We're all guilty of this. This is like, oh, which one's that one? Yeah. Just I don't know slapping. the songs by name yet. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> this is the one. You, you just start? listen to that first yeah. intro, like, and you're like, ah, yes. That's but it. yeah, for y'all listening on the podcast, I Wash My Hands is playing it right now. Enjoy. But, uh, the the last one was spreading. It was like the the angriest maybe song <laughs> had some had some intense vocals. I wonder if you're channeling anybody when you're doing those like growl vocals. Like, is there do you do you have some uh, burning burning hatred point that you like focus on to like really us, dig in us, it? Us, yeah, besides yeah. these guys, I mean, I hate these guys, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean it's just years and years of doing it. But mm -hmm. as far as like influences, you know, like the the raspier kind of higher stuff is like carcass and mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. the gates and some of the black metal bands and um even phil from pantera and then the the guttural like growling and stuff is you know anything from mortician to cannibal corpse morbid angel deicide i mean mm -hmm. just listening to a lot of old school death metal mm -hmm. the good stuff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the oldies and the goodies mm -hmm. but yeah and uh y'all practice it at fox meadow and uh, there are there any tracks that y'all have like released out of your recordings from practice? I'm just curious. No, no, we just did a little three song mm -hmm. promo mm -hmm. real quick. Well, it took us forever to record it because we don't have a lot of time to get together because yeah. they're mm -hmm. always playing. And oh I yeah. work all the time, so uh, it took forever to do it. But it was just a quick little rough demo. We got the point is the only song we put up online. Mm -hmm. that's been released. But we do have yeah. CDs of of all three. You know, Excellent. You know, yeah, and I should say again, March 8th at Maggie Myers, they'll be playing with some other awesome bands. And uh, y'all said you, you frequent the sports page, some other mm -hmm. some other venues. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other venues you would like want to push or that you think are, are heading in the right direction right now? With the jam shop we just did, they got some cool stuff. Yeah. Over, there. Over in Decatur, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shag Nasties. With, yeah. Uh... yeah, I like Shag Nasties. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've, I've worked a lot of shows there. It's a mm -hmm. good, good place. Amazing food. Yeah, the jam shop has a really good like sound setup. Like it always sounds good in there. And I can't remember the owner's name. Forgive me, sir, but you're awesome. I think he must. I think he ran road shows and stuff because uh, he's got the sound pack or the sound down packed. But uh, spreading, you'll hear it in just a minute. But uh, let's see. Before you go, are there any vehicle stories? Every band has a vehicle story. Do you guys. <laughs> he's already laughing. Do you, do you have one in mind? Uh. With this band, not really. <laughs> not, not yet, not with uh, this band. Uh, really, with this band, I swear, I swear, Klein, I did have a flat tire. Yeah, did, he about to say. I did have a flat tire. You didn't believe him? Flat tire. Well, no. <laughs> Still doesn't believe. I can tell. I have the picture to prove it to you, man. Yeah, we had to cancel a practice because of Casey. Yeah. It's flat tire. That's about as commercial as it gets. Was he drinking a fat tire or was he having a flat tire? Is the question. I wanted to say though, Michael has the best bass face of any bassist oh, yeah. I ever oh, seen. Yeah. He's got the cheeriest look on his face. The entire, both, all of you guys, uh, big How ups, because some bands are just pissed off looking when they play, but y'all look like you're really enjoying it. Secretly, he's loving, he's in love with Chris Novoselic from Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> About the same height, too. Yeah. You just gotta take Don't your shoes off. Don't lie, man. <laughs> 
But guys, thanks again for talking to us. Man, it was a lot of fun. Hope to see you back soon. Um, and they'll be playing with the Friendly Fingerman and Inclination of Direction March 8th at Maggie Myers. Check them out online, uh, Forest Haven on Face Face Space, and you got like SoundCloud <laughs> as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Very cool. Those bands and, are good. Yeah, I mean, that's a good yeah, deal. Yeah, very mm-hmm. good. It's going to be a good night. How do you feel about like the heavy in the metal scene in Huntsville as it is now? Like, Is it improving? Is it waning? <sighs> you know, is there's it... a lot here. There's so there, much. There's a lot of bands here, and... Per capita, I mean, this is really not that big of a city. <laughs> right, you right. Think about it. I mean, two hundred fifty thousand people, and there's twenty five or thirty great metal bands mm-hmm. that if they were in Atlanta or somewhere, they'd be killing. Mm-hmm. You know, in the like we were talking earlier, I think the same bunch of folks goes to see metal shows or live bands in general. So when you have three or four metal shows in town on any given night, you split those people up. Oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. definitely man. Huntsville has a huge problem with that. Yeah, I swear every every other week it's like all the shows are happening yeah. at one night. Yeah. So look at look at each other's calendars, please. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah, don't man, miss a market. I mean, I think Angry Native. And I'll just say this: I love that band. They recorded at your studio. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've told them before. Angry Native is one of my favorite bands of all bands, mm-hmm. not just local <laughs> bands. But I mean, if you haven't heard Angry Native, you need to go see those guys because yep. they're fantastic yeah. heck yes god they're so they're so good and i like I'm judas priest iron maiden saxon and angry native they're all you know, to me, they're, they're fantastic what do you think the uh like metal and that sort of music has been huge around here for a long time why do you think that is <laughs> do you guys have an opinion on it because yeah, it always it seems I'd like it always started has. with scale to earth yeah there's some legacy bands here just yeah. Yeah. random conflict yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Burning it up. Yeah, when I moved here in in ninety seven, it was from ninety seven to about two thousand one. Mm-hmm. I've never seen a metal scene like that. Yeah, it was just an unending supply of top notch metal musicians, mm-hmm. and I've never been to another town like that. Yeah, back in the day, I mean, we got metal concerts at the Civic Center. Mm-hmm. You know, Iron Maiden played here mm-hmm. you know, in eighty three or eighty two, whatever that was. And, uh, you know, all those bands. So those parents, those people that were having kids, you know, in the 90s and the 2000s are, you know, influenced by, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, the, the somewhat of a, you know, a, a, a town like Birmingham is going to have metal mm-hmm. just because of the nature of, you know, steel town like that. And Atlanta's big, going to have metal. You know, look at Nashville. It really wasn't metal, but now that it's a music town mm-hmm. and all the businesses there and the infrastructure, there's tons of metal. Mm-hmm. In Nashville, but I'd say Huntsville has there. has always had some of the best mm-hmm. yep. compared to all those other cities. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how yeah. many Nashville has, but I think per person we probably have more. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we were talking earlier. You know, there's a lot of live music. It's mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. the demographics here. You, you, so you haven't gone to see a metal show, please go. Yeah. <laughs> Try it out. It must be huge around here for a reason. I mean, reason, you're not going to see metal at concerts in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. I'd know, love to see the, like, the Madison that, uh, gazebo City gazebo kind of with, a, with like a metal band would be great. Yeah, they just like paint it black for the day and <laughs> just put out some. <laughs> well, the big spring jam, too, had good bands that came in there. It's mm-hmm. no longer but yeah. But taking you out on the podcast, spreading. And if you were on Patreon, you already saw it. Thank you again for all our Patreon friends who are keeping us afloat, keeping us buying caffeine and power. We need that. <laughs> and internet. Uh, Google Fiber, come come see us soon. Do you guys want to like uh, say keep it spicy with me to like finish off this episode after three? You ready? Let's do it. One, two, three. Keep, keep it, it spicy. spicy.